They say that good things come to those that wait. If you, like me, have been following Star Citizen for long, then you too have been waiting. In 3.9, CIG has not disappointed. With gorgeous new moons, a vibrant new city, new ships, and other interesting gameplay, CIG continues to make good on their promise of creating an online experience unlike anything found elsewhere. For me, perhaps our greatest treat came during the recent Invictus Week celebration, where players were able to get their first peek at what will be our two largest player-ownable ships planned for our future verse. This is Soren. And in this video, I want to take a closer look at these two beauties. I don't plan to talk about all of their technical specifications, but instead want to share with you my observations of these ships that have me the most excited for their eventual addition to our universe. All of my observations will focus on aspects of their designs that will aid in the one purpose that I most want these vessels for, and that is as a future home base in which I can travel the stars, exploring and adventuring with old friends and friends that I will make along the way. Currently, I think that you could say that we have two ships that potentially can fill this role to varying degrees, the Carrick and the 890 Jump. The Carrick is packed full of functionality, enabling a crew to survive on their own in a very self-sustaining way, while bringing along a healthy number of support vehicles for exploration. The 890 does not pack nearly as much utility but has the ability to carry a larger number and variety of ships, which make it uniquely capable in its own right. These two ships, I believe, will take the mobile base concept to a whole new level. While both of them are larger than the 890 Jump, I expect them to, like the Carrick, literally pack useful functionality and accommodations into every inch of their hulls. These ships have not been in development for months, but have literally been being worked on and perfected for longer than some of our more junior pilots have been alive. To the same degree that the Carrick at only one third the size of the 890 has twice the utility of the 890. I expect that the Idris and Javelin will be essentially mobile, player-owned flying cities. We have seen nothing on their caliber to date in Star Citizen, and the gameplay that they will provide to players and their friends will be unparalleled. So enough speculation for now. With the exteriors of these ships in the verse, let's take a peek at what gloriousness we have to look forward to. I want to begin by doing some quick comparisons in size of each ship to some of the larger ships that we currently have in the verse to give us a feel for how big these behemoths truly are. To start, 
we will take a look at the 890 as the largest ship that we have in the game to date. As you can see, while not nearly as wide throughout, the 890 is roughly as tall top to bottom as the Idris and roughly as long back to front. However, while the 890 is shaped like a racing yacht, the Idris is built more like Noah's Ark, ready to carry two of every living creature in its four mostly squared off walls. Again, referencing the difference in design between the 890 and the Carrick, I expect and I've heard referenced by CIG that the Idris is the most efficiently designed ship ever developed, with every inch of its interior space being used to support gameplay elements for players in the PU and Squadron 42. Comparing the 890 to the Javelin, I was initially surprised that the Javelin did not seem larger in comparison to the 890. After looking more closely, however, I noticed that a portion of the ship does actually extend between the large engines in the back, and while in absolute width, length, and height, the Javelin does not dwarf the 890 and the Idris, its larger dimension in every area lead me to the estimate that it is roughly three to four times larger than the 890. Again, knowing that this ship has been literally years in the making, I am confident that CIG has packed this ship with a mind-blowing amount of interior space and functionality. For example, we know that the Javelin has six large modular rooms on the top deck that players can outfit with whatever type of modules they want, and six large cargo areas as large as this one. Additionally, the Javelin has two modular component rooms on the mid-deck, four on the bottom deck, and two on the sub-deck. At this point, the difference between the modular rooms and the modular component rooms is not clear, but regardless, I am super excited to see a ship with this much opportunity for customization on the horizon. Not to mention the tons of other interesting areas that we have yet to see on any released ship. Next we come to the biggest bug in space, and yet this perhaps is the first time this ship has ever been dwarfed by anything else with thrusters. I do love the pose it strikes sitting on the top deck of the Idris, almost as if it is saying, mine. Next we have the beloved Carrick which you can see here relative to the Idris seems significantly smaller than it does next to the 890 due to the boxy shape of the Idris, both across and top to bottom. Where the 890 seems to contain three carracks approximately, I would say that the Idris gets closer to five. And here we have the mighty Gemini, which I imagine will be a must have for anyone planning on operating either of these ships if the 250,000 credit refill pill of the 890 is any indication of just how much these puppies are going to cost to fill up. In fact, it would not surprise me if the Javelin cost anywhere from 500 to 1 million credits for a full refill. These ships are going to be just that expensive to operate, and that is for fuel alone. Continuing our guarding critter comparisons, we have the Caterpillar, and yeah, the name never seemed ever more appropriate than when viewed from this perspective. Interestingly, the Idris M has 831 SUs of cargo, while the Idris P and K have 995. The Javelin, on the other hand, has a massive 5,400 SUs of storage, 
making its cargo capacity even greater than that of the mighty trade king, the Hull Sea. This means that the Javelin is only eclipsed in cargo capacity by the Hull D and the Hull E. As a personal favorite, I was curious to see how this other beauty stacked up next to these titans. One of my favorite aspects of the 600i are the unparalleled views from her cockpit, and so I also wanted to take a moment to highlight the consideration that has been made in both of these ships to provide views of the outside from within the ship. To me, without windows, the experience of traveling in these ships just doesn't feel as special. Windows, even when small, give you a sense that you are moving and a connection to space and the world that I find to be magical. I am so glad that CIG equipped both the Idris and the Javelin with ample exterior windows and views. These very sizable top windows on the Idris appear to serve as skylights for the crew quarters. The Idris also has several sections of large windows along its sides, which should also provide some amazing views as you move about the ship. If windows were a consideration when designing the Idris, it seems that they were prioritized in the design of the Javelin. The Javelin is also flanked with sets of large windows covering several of its decks, It also has one very large window, which will provide an amazing place to admire the stars or watch your fleet wreak havoc on your would-be agitators. I also notice this front window, which appears to span across all decks of the ship, giving crew a nice view out of the front of the javelin. Suspended above these two enormous vessels and surrounded by windows, the view from the bridge on both of these ships should be an awe-inspiring sight and perhaps the safest view in the verse. I was surprised to see how similar in size both of these bridges are to each other, with the javelin only being a little wider and a little taller. Next, I want to take a look at what we know about how the front and rear door on the Idris' internal hangar will function, so that we can make some educated guesses on what ships will reasonably fit in what I think will be an incredibly useful space and the primary reason that this ship will function so well as a mobile base, even perhaps better than the much larger Javelin. Here we see the front doors swing completely out, not obstructing any of the opening behind them. I think that it is also worth noting that both the front and rear doors have force fields of sorts, like the ones we have on the Prowler, that will maintain pressure in the ship when the, both doors are open to space. We know that the Gladius at six meters tall will be able to fit inside as we have seen many shots of the Gladius inside the Idris' internal hangar. That tells us that the following ships will also fit with no issue. The Merlin, Archimedes, Arrow, Aurora, Avenger, the Blade, Buccaneer, Banu Defender, Eclipse, Gladiator, Hurricane, M52, the Pisces, the Sabre, and the Terrapin. 
At just one meter or less taller than the Gladius, the 325, the Hornet, and the Hawk should also be able to fit with ease. I found a post on Spectrum quoting a dev saying that the Idris's internal hangar is 25 meters wide, 11 meters tall, and 110 meters long, which seems pretty darn close to my crude estimates. Knowing that, let's now take a look at some of our other favorite ships and decide if we think that they will fit as well. The Freelancer Miss and Vanguard series both come in at 9.5 meters tall, which is 3.5 meters taller than the Gladius, but it looks to me like these ships should be able to get in through the entrance when you consider the bottom clearance is flush with the bottom of the door and the top of the opening begins only a few meters below the top of the door. The Cutlass is a little more sketchy, but at only 10 meters tall, technically it should be able to fit. Its challenge might very well be its width at 26 and a half meters, putting it one and a half meters larger than the reported width of the hangar. Although we all know that Star Citizen assets tend to grow over time and I would not be overly surprised if the Idris could now accommodate the Cutlass series of aircraft. Here we see at the rear of the Idris that the back door is a bit more narrow and shorter than the overall interior bay. Compared to this rear door, we see that the Cutlass seems to be just about as wide as the door. So even if we will not be flying our cutlasses through the rear entry of the ship, we should be able to fly them through the front entry, which is the exact same dimensions as the rest of the internal bay. Lengthwise, by the numbers provided, we should expect to be able to fit five gladiuses in the hangar front to back, with a 110 meter long hangar and each gladius being 20 meters long. As you can see, this number seems to be spot on. One would think that with a bit of staggering, one could potentially get close to eight or nine if you parked them side by side in a staggered manner, but we will have to see what is possible. Things get even more interesting if you consider the arrow. At only 16 meters long and 12 meters wide, we should be able to fit up to 12 of these still very potent small fighters into the Idris, meaning that a large group of friends could all bring a craft to take out for missions or in the event that you needed to scramble fighters to defend your flying home. I could even see heading out with eight friends with their prospectors loaded up in the hangar Heading out to the soon to be released and rumored to be extremely dangerous pyro system to mine for super valuable and highly sought after resources. Regardless of the exact dimensions, this hangar to me is what is going to make this ship. Unlike the Kraken, the Idris will be able to securely transport a large number of small vessels for use at whatever destination you choose and it is large enough to support a variety of crafts for any number of purposes. I cannot wait to get my hands on an Idris and let the shenanigans commence. Finally, returning to the Javelin, I want to end this video by taking a closer look at its ship carrying capabilities. The Javelin actually has two hangars, although we only really know very much about the prominent one on the top deck. While not able to carry nearly as much as the Idris in sheer number of vehicles, the Javelin does boast what I think will be the largest hangar of any ship for the foreseeable future. If we can squeeze the Vanguard series into the Idris, we know for certain that it will fit with ease into the Javelin hangar. I think that the same will be true for all of the Cutlass and Freelancer variants. It even looks to me like those who favor alien tech should be able to travel to and from their Javelin in Tavarin style, or maybe even when boarding ships that they have disabled with their somewhat modest ship armaments. 
I expect that a mole should also be able to fit in the hanger as only being slightly longer and less wide than the prowler. Sadly, it looks to me like we will not be going planet side in our executive style Phoenix. For that, we will have to travel in our 890s or our Krakens. More exciting to me is the fact that the Javelin can not only fit larger ships in its hangar, but can also still fit a surprisingly large number of very capable fighters as well. I also want to draw your attention to this other very large airlock listed as a cargo lift on the bottom of the Javelin. While not listed as a hangar of any sort, this door is certainly large enough to allow entry and exit of ships as large as the Gladius. While perhaps not meant for quick aircraft deployment, I wonder if this area of the ship might not somehow connect to the six large cargo rooms in which other small craft could be kept for long-term storage and transportation. Perhaps just in my dreams. I know that server performance ended up being a challenge during Invictus week, and that was frustrating. The reality is that this event was unchartered territory. I once heard a definition of success that captures an element of success that I think is often de-emphasized, and that is moving from failure to failure without getting discouraged. I want CIG to dream big. I want them to roll out content before it is perfect. Dare I say, I am fine with CIG failing, as long as they keep going without getting discouraged. I am having a blast with Star Citizen, and if these ships are any indication of what they are working toward, then I plan to strap in and enjoy the ride, bumps and all. I want to thank you so much for taking your time to admire these gorgeous ships with me. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that like me, these ships have you excited for our shared future in the verse. I hope to see you next time, Soarin' Out.